Welcome back to another episode of the Girl Power Alliance podcast. As usual, I have a phenomenal woman on here with you today. I cannot wait to see where the Lord takes this conversation. Let me share a little bit with you about Diana. Diana Swillinger is a life coach for Christian women, a business coach for solopreneurs, and the host of the Renew Your Mind podcast. By the way, we could stop there and just talk about that podcast because everyone on the planet right now needs to renew their mind. (laughs) Diana became passionate about coaching after spending her life trying to do the right thing, like be the best mom, wife, business person, going to church, looking presentable, recycling. (laughs) But she ended up feeling stuck and miserable. She tried all the things, but the game changer was learning practical ways to renew the mind. Now, Diana is on a mission to help other women unstuck their brains and stop sabotaging themselves by teaching practical tools that will allow you to enjoy life again, step into who God created you to be and experience hope, peace, and joy like never before. Diana, thank Jesus you're here today. Thank you. Just hearing that back. I know it's all about me, but it, it just takes me back through what I lived through and where I am now. And it just continues to inspire me. I mean, I mean, first of all, even before the world kind of flipped on its head, do you feel like the world has flipped on its head a little bit? Yes, definitely. I did a, I even did an episode about when life throws you a curveball. I need to do another one when life throws you multiple curveballs. It's just a weird, weird. (laughs) When life just consecutively keeps throwing the curve. It's the strangest that I feel out of sorts um, a lot of the time. And I try to stay in a bubble, you know what I mean? But there there, things just happen. This week in particular, there happened to be an 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 incredible amount of warfare um, on me and my family and I know many, many people feel like that. So what a timely thing that you're doing. And before we kind of go wherever we're going to go, would you share a little bit more with everybody? Because your bio is your bio, but share, let everybody know who you are. Sure. Well, I'm a Midwestern girl. You can probably tell by my accent or you will partway through. (laughs) Um, I'm married. I have four kids. My three boys are all taller than me. And then I have their um, young adults and I have an 11 year old girl. I happen to uh, start my day with coffee every day. That's a normal thing. Sometimes I like to finish it out with a piece of French silk pie. Ooh. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I have a favorite restaurant for that and everything too. So, you know, that's kind of where I'm at, uh, you know, as a woman, that's my little family. That's the stuff we say, but you said it in the bio. I thought I was going to be a happy person just because I'm a Christian and I go to church and I volunteer and married and I'm doing it all. But that wasn't the case. I was, I was miserable for years. And there's a lot of that story we're not going to get into today, but I tried to cope in unhealthy ways. And there was finally this day where I was laying in my bedroom. I would go there for solace because life just got overwhelming. Middle of the afternoon, shut the door, laying on my bed. And it was like I was done. I just didn't have energy. I didn't even know what I was thinking. I didn't know what I was feeling. I had my cell phone with me and my mentor from church called because I had emailed her earlier that day. And she listened to me and the little words I had to say, because there wasn't much. And she pondered and she said, I think you're discouraged. Oh. And it was true. I was, but I, I couldn't even name it at that point. Yeah. You know, like my brain was just on overload. I yep. couldn't make sense of what was going on. My marriage was struggling. I was in school. I was back in school, getting a degree at the time, working full time, managing the home, feeling overwhelmed. And she came in and she named my emotion Mm. and I had relief. So from that point on, I went on a mission. Yes. I'm like, there is something magical here that I didn't know before by being able to name my emotion. So I went into all the self-help books. I started listening to podcasts, reading psychologists, taking psychology courses, uh, doing the Bible studies that were about renewing the mind and all of it. And I felt like I still had all the knowledge, but was missing the practical tools. So I went headlong into life coaching and I found the practical tools that make renewing the mind possible. And now I just want to share it with everybody. I went from having no energy and being uninspired to wanting to show up better for people in my life. Every day I went from hiding in my bedroom, which I did several Mm. times (laughs) to wanting to reach out to people I trusted and learn and be challenged to be my best self. And I went from feeling discouraged to um, having courage to move forward, no matter what life threw my way. 
Wow. And that's quite a transformation. Yeah. And it all came to a head when I had, you know, I, I left a job. uh, My boss asked me to leave. That's another story. We all have so many stories. And, uh, and so here I had all these life coaching tools and I had the ability to go back. I had a marketing job lined up at this local company would have been a nice corporate job. And I decided, I believed God was nudging me. Yeah. I'm like, now's the time. All the stuff I learned, I need to go teach it to the people who are like me and they need this. So that's it's, all it's of it in a nutshell. inspiring to me. So many things are inspiring to me. First of all, I know every woman that is listening to this. And even if a man is listening to this, you, they can relate just this week. I told you I had a lot of warfare this week. One, one day at like six, I'm, I don't go to bed early, but at like six o'clock I go, I have to go upstairs. And I literally just laid there. I didn't even go to sleep for hours, but I was just like, it was like over, I, I get what you're talking about. I couldn't even name what it was. It was everything all at once and nothing. It was just, and so, um, I, I think it is so powerful. And, you know, it says in the Bible to renew our mind daily. And that is such a powerful thing that I think we kind of just like, oh yeah, we know the verse, but what does that actually mean? And so not only did God, I just, I love how God works. Like he takes us in our worst place in the worst, saddest thing And he allows us to use that as the jumping off point. And then for us, right. But then he doesn't just say that's enough. He says, I did this for you. And now you go do it for other people. And that's exactly what you're doing. It's so inspiring. Thank you. I didn't necessarily want to do it. Of course not. (laughs) (laughs) That came with a whole nother bag of emotions. (laughs) It does. And I love, I'd I'd love for you to speak into this because I feel like this is one of the, one of the things I really want women to, to get when they hear these podcasts is you, you said you think God was nudging you. So will you talk about kind of that like push and pull that you felt because you had something lined up that was safe and it would have been easy for you to go into, but something moved you forward to jump out into this new world of coaching and helping people. Yeah, this is one of these moments in my life where uh, we could look back on it and be like, oh, that's kind of coincidental how that all felt together at the same time. But no, for me, it was God's like, I'm going to do, you know, X, Y, Z, you're going to see it all and you're going to put the pieces together because I don't want you to miss this. So here I was after leaving that, that one job, I, I took a breather. I was looking at other jobs. So I had this marketing job lined up and was talking to my husband about the possibility of being, um, well, actually I should back up. I had not even thought about being a life coach. I was pursuing this job in the middle of their long interview process, which was, had a lot of scrutiny and I grew a lot in that. I had three different people say to me independently without me asking anything or saying anything about my journey. They said, you'd make a good life coach. (sighs) It's like, what? I would make a good life coach. I mean, could God get any clearer than that? I'm going to put three people in two weeks time to tell you, you'd make a good life coach, but I still have, so that's an unknown. I have no idea how to do that. Other than all these skills I learned, how do I start a business as a life coach? I don't know. Or take this nice cushy job. And then my ment- that same mentor at church said, Diana, I'm going to pray for you that God will give you a verse. I'm like, oh, great. Now you're testing God. <laughs> but, um, a verse came and I was like, it just hit me like smack in the middle of the head. I'm like, this is it. It's in James. Um, I wrote down a couple notes from it. So I didn't forget, but it's in James four, 14 through 17. I had been reading the entire James. And then this just smacked me in the head. It's basically said, how do you know what life's going to be like tomorrow? Everything comes and goes. You should be asking the Lord what he wants you to do. Otherwise, you're just being boastful about your own plans. And I had a lot of plans for that nice, cushy corporate job. And then the last verse, 17, this is quoted. Remember, it is a sin to know what you ought to do Mm. and then not do it. Mm. Mm. I was like, "Mm." oh boy. Oh boy. And then my husband said to me when I told him that verse, he said, if you, if you take that job, think of all the women you won't help. Wow. I was like, wow. You know, that frozen song into the unknown. That was it. (laughs) I know it. Well, wow. (laughs) I mean, that's a powerful thing. And I think that, um, 
those, the women that are listening, or if you're watching on the YouTube channel, you've had these things happen to you. And so it takes so much courage. It takes so much courage, so much faith, so much trust in God and not in us to just say, you know what? I I'm pretty sure this is what you're saying. I'm going to go for it and we'll just see what happens. Right. You're literally yeah. stepping out into the unknown. I like to say like, it's like you're taking steps with a blindfold on with zero clue where your foot will land. Exactly. Which t- I mean, I, I don't understand uh, outside of the, the world of being a follower of Christ, how people do that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. They definitely need to manage their own brain, but how do you do it without faith, faith and trusting God in every step you take? I don't know. That's got to be super nerve wracking. Yeah, oh yeah. And no wonder people have, are so filled with so much anxiety and stress. You know what I mean? Without yeah. that, that covering that, that we have. And so, you know, you step out, right? You go in a direction that's totally uncomfortable, totally scary, totally new. And let's talk about, let's talk about that. How have, what do you feel like now? What, how has God shown you that this is exactly where you were supposed to go? Well, it's that and still feeling blind and like, I don't know where I'm going. So it's not like I'm several years into it now. And now the entire way has opened up and I know what's coming. It's, it's pretty much the same as it was when I started years ago, where I'm like, I don't know how. And I have to be okay with the, I don't know how. Yeah. And that's the definition of faith. I think, you know, think so. no, knowing you're going to trust what God put before you and having no idea how he's going to make it happen, how he's going to keep you safe, how any of it. So I don't remember what your question was, but <laughs> I, I do still feel like I'm doing it blind. <laughs> I, I love that though, because I mean, the thing is, human beings, we like seek out comfort, right? We seek out comfort. We seek out familiarity. We seek out safety. We seek out all these things, but God is literally calling us to the exact opposite of that. And so for you too, you've been doing this for a couple of years now. I'm certain you've helped a number of women. That's, and uh, you know, what an incredible feeling to know that you, God used you on the, as a piece and a part of their journey. That's just a humbling thing. But I feel like when you really, um, when you really allow yourself to be, to submit to God's plans to you, you are in a perpetual state of, well, I think you're saying this. I don't know how in the world this is going to happen. I'm going to take the step. So you better be there to like either fix it if I mess it up or catch me if I fall. And that is a true, that is to me, that's true humility. And I feel like God can do the most remarkable work when we're there. Yeah. And I think there's actually safety in that humility. We think being, being humble or, or trusting and not knowing what's coming next is scary. And yes, it is sometimes, but in that humility, when we let go and we're surrendering it all to God, he's our safety net. Yes. And I practice all the time, not making my business about me. When I do, I get tripped up. When I do, I get very fearful or anxious or confused when I make it all about me. So I know as soon as I start feeling the weight, like, what if the, what if I screw up? What if this goes south? I've suddenly made it all about me and it's time to let go of that. And for me, it's about two things. It's about honoring God and serving him ultimately all for his glory and then serving his people. He's put on my heart, Christian women, you know, who, like I described in the beginning, they just feel like they've done everything right, but they're still miserable. I, I'm here to help. And it's about them. I just finished coaching someone this week, 12 weeks. And she cried at the last session. And I did my best not to cry because, you know, as a, as a coach, we try, we try to stay nice and stable and consistent when we're coaching people so we can just be of sound mind and be there for whatever they need. But I cried a little bit with her because it is so satisfying. Like I, did God's bidding. I touched his child, someone he loves, Mm. someone who needed me to be a conduit of his love and encouragement so that she could step more into who God created her to be. And she felt that she lived that. And then I just got to connect with her in that moment. So if I ever, you know, make it all about me again, I just remember (laughs) moments like that, where God's being glorified and um, his people are being loved. 
it's it's an incredible lesson that I continue to learn. Like, it's not like I learned that lesson and then tomorrow I don't have to relearn it. Like I keep learning that lesson over and over and over. And as um, I have journeyed into this space with Girl Power Alliance, doing things that I have never done um, and many scary blind steps, it's, I, I, yes, to what you said. When I start to feel overwhelmed, inadequate, stressed, I realize it's because I'm trying to control. Like I'm trying to make things happen the way that I think they're supposed to happen with my mind, with my expectations. And I literally have to like have that come to literally come to Jesus moment where I'm like, okay, this is your deal. This is your thing. And this is going to happen when you're ready for it to happen, regardless of what I do or don't do. So I'm just going to like take a deep breath and allow you to do your thing. And I have to do that very regularly. (laughs) Yeah. I use the visual of like, if I was holding my business in my hand, I know if you're listening, you can't see it, but my hand's open right now. We start to gradually close our fingers and try to start holding on tighter, like the control you said. And then it's like, oh, wait, 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 wait. I forgot. Open my palm back up and release it to God and let him be in control. Got to hang on to it loosely because I don't know what he has for me next. And I'm learning to be okay with that. And if it brings up a little bit of fear, not, not uh, unhealthy fear, but a little bit of the fear of the unknown. That's okay. I can just be like, that's fine. I'll just do it anyway. And fear can just come along with me. It's fine. We'll do this. I've always said that, uh, you are able to be successful dependent on the amount of uncertainty that you can manage. I mean, just feel like that's kind of there is uncertainty just in general, especially for me, as I follow biblical principles. And many times, I'm sure that you have experienced this many times as a believer, the decisions we make in our business go against like what you would hear in like business school, right? Right. And so being able to manage the uncertainty of kind of almost as an entrepreneur, especially a, a kingdom entrepreneur, you're fighting against what is the world telling you you're supposed to do versus that like mute that out. What is God saying that you specifically in particular are supposed to do? Cause it may be different than, and often it is, but it may even be different than the, the, the kingdom entrepreneur next to you. Like <laughs> he speaks to us individually. So I think it's so beautiful how much he cares individually about each one of us, which is why I love so much um, what we're doing here at Girl Power Alliance to bring all these women together. And many times they're in a similar profession, but there's zero competition because everyone is so unique in their gifting, in their story, in their perspective, that there's room for everybody. Yeah, absolutely. I just want to say, I know you talked about facing uncertainty and being able to manage uncertainty. The the real secret is everything's always uncertain anyway, except what God is telling us and what God is promising. That's the only place of certainty. All this stuff on on earth, what's going to happen with the economy? What's going to happen with my business? Am I going to have haters? Am I going to have lovers? Am I, is this business going to work? Is it not going to work? That's just all earthly noise. That's all uncertain anyway. Certainty here, when we look around us on the earth is, is a myth. The only certainty comes when we look up to Christ's eternal promises. Oh, yes, yes. And yes, and yes. And I appreciate that perspective so much. And I know that I know that renewing your mind is a big call and more women need to hear about you and know what you're doing. And the, the, the thing is the self-help world is big. There's a million Mm -hmm. up, there's a million coaches out there, but there are not a million coaches who are pointing people in the right direction. And the thing that I have found specifically about the new age movement, because that seems to be so prevalent in the self-help world, like manifest this and the universe, this and all this stuff. And then it harms me when I hear it. Cause I'm like, it's not the universe. It's the creator of the universe. Right. The right? universe has your back, Michelle, the universe. No, no, no. <laughs> the universe that actually does not have my back. Right. God has my back. And, and so it's, I think that the most dangerous lies are the ones with some truth in there. And so this new age world will like hijack truths, some of the truths, biblical truths, but they twist it just, and they take it just off center. And so I think for so many people, it seems attractive because 
some, their body, their soul, their body, their mind, it's recognizing some truth, right? But it gets people so off course. So what you're doing is so wildly important and people need more people like you in the world. More people need to find you. Uh, more people need to do what you're doing and just bathe people in the word. And I know that's what you're doing. Yes. Thank you. And I would say if anyone's listening to this too, and they're getting into this self-help realm or, realm or coaching or all that, I've read a lot of the books. I've read some Byron Katie. I've read some Eckhart Tolle and Jen Sincero and Tony Robbins and some of this other stuff. And I read it all with a critical eye. And I always ask the Holy Spirit to infuse uh, truth into me. Now, some of these people have some tools that are helpful. Yes. But you have to be able to compare them to God's word and make sure that it lines up. So I think there is a way to help people in the self-help kind of way and stay true to God's word. And that is a huge part of my mission. And every time before I go speak, before I go pray, I always, I mean, before I go coach, I should say, I always pray. I ask that God would keep me. Yeah. (laughs) I do that a lot. My tongue gets ahead of my brain. Um, I always ask God in prayer first to keep me and my client aligned to his truth, his word, and not be led astray, not even by a little, because you're right. Satan's most clever and most powerful lies are the ones that are guised as truth. And so we do need to be on alert. And I hope, and I believe, I mean, that's my purpose is to help people in this way without Satan's lies, sneaking it in there at all and having it all be God centric. And and if it doesn't match up in the Bible, I'm not going to teach it. Mm. It's powerful stuff. And, you know, I continually tell myself that I am not the message. I think that often um, ego takes over in any profession, it doesn't matter what it is. And you become the message. It becomes about you. And so I, I constantly am telling myself, I am not the message. I'm the messenger. He's the message. And so my job is to deliver the message, deliver the message, deliver the message, not be the message. Yep. That's you making it not about you. I love it. Um, I, okay. So I know that people are listening they're like, okay, I need, I need Diana. Tell me and tell everybody listening how they can find you, what you're, you know, what you can do with and for them and how to connect with you. Well, there's lots of ways, but I try not to overwhelm people with all of them. But one of the things I do is, is to try to help people for free as much as possible. Obviously I have a business and I coach people one-on-one and that's available, but I also do Facebook lives all the time. I do free webinars every month. Um, I'll put videos on Instagram. I'm available via DM and email. I'll help anyone anytime um, with what they've got. So you can also listen to my podcast, the Renew Your Mind podcast. It's on iTunes and all sorts of other places. And um, I, I share what can help you and is practical on renewing your mind that, that, is, that lines up with the Bible. But I just get into nitty gritty tools and skills because that's what I needed. Yeah. Uh, there is also, um, I would say if somebody wants something right away that they want to work on, I have a free guide, three steps to manage your mind. That's available right on my website, dianaswillinger.com. Nobody's going to know how to spell that, but I'll have it in the show notes. So you just drop just it there. They'll just want to click on it. Yeah. yeah. Um, so that's it. Diana Swillinger on Instagram. I'd be happy to connect and help with anybody who wants to talk with me. Um, we will make sure that if you're listening to this podcast, everything that she just said will be available. Just scroll into the show notes and you can click right on it. And if you're watching this on YouTube, just right below the video, we'll have everything there. So it, she'll just be a click away and you can connect with her. Um, I think what you're doing is holy work. I'm so happy that we got connected and um, I just want to thank you for what you're doing. Oh, you're welcome. And thank you for what you're doing. I love the Christian, um, uh, take on empowering women. And I think what you're doing is so huge to give us all a voice and, and know that our work matters and we can work together to empower each other and do more things to bring glory to God. So thank you for all that you're doing and following his push for you to go down this path. Thank you. I, again, I'm just like you, I just want to be a good steward to the, the task at hand that he has given me today. 
<laughs> yeah, might be different tomorrow, but today this is what this is the task at hand. And um, I believe that this is a very special time in the world for women. And I believe that uh, God basically told me at the beginning of 2020 that there are millions of women in the marketplace and millions of women in the marketplace who love Jesus and what they do is their ministry. And we need to just turn the volume up on their voice. I love it. Well, thank you so much for joining us. Um, I know that you've got, here's the thing. There were a million takeaways from the things that she didn't even, wasn't even trying to drop like truth bombs and she did. So go find her, connect with her, glean from her experience and her love of the Lord and her love to help people. And uh, like I said, I'm so grateful. Thank you for being on our podcast today. It was my pleasure. Thanks for having me.